When it comes to the world within us, we are dealing with feelings. Everything is a feeling inside. And there are many feelings that we were taught to feel about ourselves and many feelings that we were taught to feel powerless by and many feelings we were taught how to handle and how not to handle. And we were taught which feelings to accept and not to accept. And yet every single feeling is within you. That this world really is a world of feeling clothed in this symbolic form. And yet when I go within myself, I can't take these things within me. Yet I see them, but they're representations of what I'm feeling. And so I have certain thoughts and they align in the certain nature of my feeling about myself. And the self is the dreamer. When you create a scene inside yourself, you are dreaming the scene. It's you who is dreaming it. And if you forget that, you will think that you are the conception. And when you think you are the conception, when you think you are something, you can't change it because that's who you think you are. Once you detach yourself from these scenes, detach yourself from these conceptions and see that you're the dreamer, the self that precedes the concept, the self that precedes the self-concept, then you can move. You can change the concept. But if you keep thinking you're the concept, if you keep thinking that you're the, the thoughts or you're the feelings, if you don't detach yourself from them, then you can't really move. You'll be stuck. You'll feel stuck. And all things within us are feelings. But the inner man cannot be stuck inside his own imagination. He's only believing that he's stuck. He believes he lost control. He believes he lost freedom. He believes he lost whatever it is that he is suffering in. He believes he lost something. And it's you, the inner man, inside imagination who believes this. And so there's no feelings that you're powerless by. And there's no feelings you can't accept. And there's no permission you need to feel something about yourself. And that's what Neville says, a change in feeling is a change in destiny. Because the way I feel towards myself is directly correlated to the quality of life I have and the nature of my life. If I live in a hell, you can bet that my, my assumptions of myself are hell-like. They're probably terrible. And so I change the self, the concepts of myself. By I, I, the self, remain the same. As Neville said, you can be aware of being something. You can be aware of being this or that, but you can never stop being aware that you are. What you're aware of may change, but you can never stop being aware. And when I change the way I feel towards myself, I inevitably ch change my destiny. Because it's linked. Myself and my life are directly linked. And so if I want to change my life, I have to change myself, how I feel towards myself. It never would say change the feeling of I. The I there is the thing that precedes everyone's I. You can't talk about another when you say I. And that I is God. That is the causal power. And I don't use hyperbole. I mean that seriously. If you change your feeling towards yourself, you change your feeling of I, you will change your life because your I is your life. It's your awareness of being. You can't, you can't be a concept without being the self. And so you, you mistakenly place the concepts, you put them on a pedestal above you. Or you may have taken a person and put them above you. As Neville said, you know, um, Abdullah once told him, he told Neville, never, make, never let anyone make you feel small, Neville. He says that the moment someone tries to make you feel small, just imagine them on the toilet, just having a bowel movement. And you can do this. You can imagine someone doing that. And I know it's kind of funny, but it proves a point that everyone is a slave to these bodies. No one is not. I don't care how rich you are. You have to, you are, have to assimilate your food. You have to digest it. You are not freed from these bodies. So don't let anyone make you feel small. And there might be doubting words coming at you, but you really prove your power in being indifferent to these things. As Neville said, the be perfectly indifferent to your senses, that you may feel the naturalness of your desire. And so if I want to feel natural about having it, then I associate myself with the inner man who does have it. I become indifferent to my senses. I become indifferent to the doubts. I become indifferent to the reason. And I find myself expressing what I desire within myself. And I trust that. I give my, I trust, as almost I trust imagination implicitly. I completely give my trust over to it. But never forget that you're the dreamer in your scenes. You're always the dreamer. These, these, this scene can't exist without you. These conceptions can't exist without you. So its reality is dependent upon you. It doesn't really exist without you until you occupy it. And how do I occupy a state? 
Why well, becoming completely indifferent to the states that I was in? I, as Neville says, you let go. You, you, never, you don't remember the state you were. You forget it. You completely forget it. And now you enter the state that you want to be in. But we can become such slaves to time. This is what Neville said, that we become such slaves to time that the moment we do not see our conceptions embodying itself immediately, we go back to our former state. But who is going back to the former state? It's the inner man. So the inner man either enters a new state or he goes back to his previous state. He's always in a state. You're always in a state no matter what. So if you are leaving a state to enter into a greater state that you conceive is greater, why go back? You left for a reason. There's a reason why you're leaving the state you're in to go to something greater. Why look back? So you, remember, you don't remember your limitations anymore. You forget them. Man paints on a canvas, but God dreams. So start dreaming something new within you. Assume it to be the case. Not for another, but for yourself. You assume this about you. Entirely all about you. You don't let anyone else's opinion get in the way. Because who's doing it? Who does all things within me? Myself. Whether I harm myself, I shame myself, it's all done by me. One power. There's only one power and it's me. So if I wish to raise myself, I don't go to something outside of me. If I wish to hinder myself, I don't go to something outside of me. You don't worship the things anywhere. You don't worship gold. You give these things up and you go to its maker. And you'll find that all these gods were created by the imagination. All these things that people do is created by the imagination. All these things that people worship, all the people that people worship, are they're worshiping states. You see people worshiping states and they don't realize that they are the being that is occupying the state. The state is powerless without you. And so don't, don't go around trying to worship other people. You're just worshiping states. Instead, take the attitude of testing. Become... Become interested in testing this always. Don't be so concerned with trying to change the external if you can't really change the internal. Learn to settle in in a new state inside yourself. Occupy some new environment in you and test it. Take the attitude of testing it. You'll go a long way doing, doing it that way than you would forcing changes upon your life. Test these changes. Well, if I change myself, if I really see myself, if I know that everything really is a feeling in me, that poverty is a feeling, that shame is a feeling, that feeling uh, less than others is a feeling. If I, if I know that th these things are feelings, and if I can change the way I feel towards myself, if I can test this, then I should see some change in my external life. If I truly change within myself, well, how do I know I've changed? Well, I don't look back. I feel something new about myself, and I don't look back. Let your yeses be yeses, and your noes be noes. And that's, what, that's the story. That's the story of all of us. We are always dying to ourselves and resurrecting new states within ourselves. But many of us don't consciously do it. We just let these things happen. We, we, we trip and we fall into a new state without even realizing it. But become aware of who you are, that you're the dreamer inside yourself. You're the one dreaming these thoughts. And when you see that you're the dreamer and you assume that life's a dream, you can change it. Until then, you're going to feel like a complete victim of your thoughts. And you're not. You're no one's victim inside. You're no one's slave inside. You're completely free to imagine anything you wish. You are completely free to extend your power of belief beyond your senses and extend it within yourself. So I believe within myself. I, I extend this power to me. I no longer put it into the things of the world, but into the maker which is myself. If I said that imagination creates these gods in this world, imagination creates the things in this world, you would say, well, I am imagination. My imagination does it. Yes, so we are one with imagination. We are one with the creator. There aren't two gods. There's only one God, one Lord that we should follow. And it's within us as everything is. Everything is with, even the gods are within us. All things are within us. And I don't care what it is. I don't care what you're searching for, it's within you. And you can't lose it. How can you lose things that are within you? So you can't lose these things. You can't lose these, this power. You can misuse it upon yourself, but you can't lose it. And this is the same story that's been said over and over again. That although it appears without, it is within. 
Do I actually believe that? If I do believe that, then I can test it. If I actually believe that what is without is within, that I don't need to go to anyone to change it. There's so much power in that. I go within myself. I feel myself to be changed. I feel myself to have. I feel myself to be. And don't look back to my former feeling. I don't look back. I don't need to. And I press forward ahead. You know, that he who looks back is not fit for the kingdom. He puts his hand on his plow, but he looks back. He's not fit. So if I want to get fit, I have to stop looking back. And that's the story.